for watching. Today I'm going to show you what I think is the coolest addition, the coolest new addition to my RC studio. Uh, you have seen me perhaps showcase my studio in the past and uh, uh, sort of like break down all of its features and behind me you can see the latest edition. This is uh, the Snapmaker 2.0. This is a 3-in-1 machine. So this is a CNC machine, a 3D printer and a laser engraver all combined into one sexy looking unit if I say so myself. Now uh, this is two parts. You have the machine itself which uh, sits inside this enclosure. I will turn the light on in a bit. And then you have the enclosure which is a, a separate uh, order if you uh, if you will. Uh, I do think that it looks super coherent. I've put mine on an IKEA uh, trolley so I also have all of my additional parts sitting in the bottom over there which I think is pretty handy. Let me turn on the power unit. The power unit is pretty loud but there's also there's a ton of stuff to, uh, to power up here so I don't really think that's a surprise. Now with it being powered on the first thing that you see is that this hand control unit this is wired in. Uh, this immediately lights up and tells you to go make something wonderful. You can also see that it is hooked up to my uh, Wi-Fi, which I think is uh, really dope. This is an Android-based touchscreen unit. So if you slide this to the side, if we go to settings for the enclosure, for example, then I can turn the lights on, which is great. So there's two LED strips in the top. Now all of this stuff comes as a, a build kit, so you do need to assemble it. Um, I know absolutely nothing about 3D printing, uh, like I'm completely new to this. That's also why I'm making these videos. I hope that perhaps you're also new to it, perhaps you think that you're going to be as intimidated as, uh, as I was or am by 3D printing and then perhaps we can just discover the way into 3D printing together. This is a filament printer, so this is an FDM machine uh, as they call those and then there's also resin printers. I also have a resin printer which I will show you in a later video. This video I really want to focus on uh, the Snapmaker. Now the Snapmaker it is uh, like I mentioned a 3-in-1 machine. It is cur currently set up as a, a 3D printer. So you can see in the top over there there's the 3D printing head and then over here this is the 3D printing bed. If you want to do something else with this machine, so for example you want a CNC machine or you want to laser engrave or laser cut something you change out the head over here, so that uh, unit right there, which is really simple, four screws from the back and you change out the bed. Now changing out the bed is a tiny bit more complicated, there's a magnetic mat on this uh, 3D printer bed and below that you see there's 20 something screws that you need to take out in order to, uh, to change that base. Of course if you want to CNC machine something you would replace this with a waste board. I'll make sure that you see that one as well. And if you want to laser cut with like an, uh, an additional different uh, working surface that you mount to this uh, plate, to this base plate uh, in order to go get your laser engraving or laser cutting going. If we go over the main base, the main base of this uh, Snapmaker 2.0 is something that does not change. Uh, even though you can sort of like uh, browse through the functionality of the machine itself by setting it up to do different tasks like for example CNC machining, laser engraving or cutting or then 3D printing the way I have it set up. Uh, the base stays the same constantly. So I will just show you the main items of the base and also you will go to some close-ups of me assembling the machine. This thing comes so well packaged, it is really a joy to build and also the instructions are very clear. This is not a complicated build at all, if you just uh, take your time, really take your time to have like plenty of nerdgasms to put this thing together, uh, you can do this within a day. And that's the machine plus the enclosure. If you just need to assemble the machine, set aside one morning and you are good to go. Let's dive into it and see what it actually has and does. This cast aluminum uh, base plate, this is what you start out with and then from there you kind of build the machine up to what you see over here. So the main part of course with uh, any of these uh, 3D machines are uh, the X axis, the Y axis and the Z axis. So the X sits over here, the Y sits there and the Z that is the one that uh, goes in the height. Uh, so there's two y-axes, 
uh, two Z axes and one X axis if that uh, makes any sense. Now all of these are identical so these five axes, these five linear modules are completely the same. Uh, that also makes it really easy to not mix them up when you're assembling it. These are also very clean looking industrial uh, strength or industrially engineered units. So this type of uh, linear module that you see here, usually you would find this in a way more expensive, way more complicated machine. So the motors are integrated inside of those uh, aluminum profiles. The opening is uh, guarded by this stainless strip. So no debris can come inside of this uh, linear module. And then inside sits a large screw that uh, guides the position of where the unit sends one. Well, in this case a printer head, but in the case of this Z axis where it puts the X axis. So I hope that makes uh, sense. Now wiring all of this up is really simple actually because what you do for those uh, double modules, so there's uh, of course there's two over here and there's two vertical, you just plug those into one of these a converter, so this is kind of a reverse splitter, so you put two cables in, one comes out, same goes for this one. And after that you plug all of that into this unit right here, which is called the controller. Now there's plenty of stuff here that you can plug in, but you can tell that there's also still some open room. Uh, Snapmaker is constantly innovating this machine and improving it. So now for example they have released a rotation module, which you can put on this bed which would allow you to uh, CNC machine over four axes instead of over three. Inside of this controller you will find that you can plug in your uh, printer head which uh, goes in the very top over there but also your heated bed. So this printer bed, this is heated. Uh, again this magnetic piece, this comes off. But you can set the temperature for this printer bed uh, according to what you're printing with. So for example for a PLA which is a type of a printer filament uh, you would need a different temperature than for example uh, ABS or for uh, PETG, I'm not sure if people say PETG or PETG. But all of that stuff is really easy to dial in using this uh, handheld uh, controller, this touch screen that you find on the front. I can't emphasize enough how much fun it was to assemble this thing, not just the machine itself but also its uh, enclosure. The Snapmaker, they offer this thing, uh, this 2.0, in three different sizes. This is the largest one, so this is what they call the A350. I believe that the uh, obtainable size that you can get out of this printer is 320 millimeters, 350 millimeters, 320 millimeters. They also have an A250 and they also have an A150. So there's plenty of options depending of course on how much space you have available and what you want to do with this printer. Uh, if I want to print for example an entire RC car body I can just go ahead and do that with this uh, Snapmaker 2.0. Now when you have everything built and you are basically good to go apart from uh, uh, understanding the software which we will get into in a tiny bit is calibrate the bed. So what you need to do is you press this it will automatically run a calibration process to make sure that everything on here is level and flat. The only thing you need to adjust uh, in the end is the height from your printer nozzle towards your bed. Uh, apart from that this thing does everything for you. I think that covers for most part the Snapmaker 2.0, the working unit. Um, what I also do want to talk about is the enclosure. Now the enclosure like I mentioned it is an option usually on your uh, Snapmaker 2.0 you would have on one of these Z axes in the back you would have a little bracket with uh, a holder for your uh, spool so for your filament in my case because I'm running the enclosure I had to move the spool uh, to the outside which I don't think is a bad thing it will make it really easy to change things out in case you are printing with uh, the doors closed. What printing with the doors closed what it also allows me to do is uh, opening doors if I want to go to uh, the carpentry workshop or go outside without distorting anything or causing too large deviations in a printing or bed temperature which I think is fairly important. Now apart from it just looking totally sick and uh, all of the stuff that I just told you 
I also wanted to have this enclosure because it keeps odors out. You can imagine that if I start laser cutting or laser engraving stuff in here, so whether that be like fabric, wood, leather, uh, acrylic, whatever, that this place is going to stink like hell. Uh, not just here, but also upstairs in my office, and I want to avoid that at all costs. So for that reason, there's a little fan in the back over here. Really easy to set up with the hose clamp. You can connect the hose is in one of these boxes. I'll make sure that you see a close-up of that. And that hose, I can just throw it out of the window right here. Or in the long run, I want to run sort of like a duct or a pipe system to the carpentry side of my workshop. Just so I can expel any type of uh, nasty smells or nasty odors or perhaps hazardous odors. So having this enclosure for me feels very safe, feels like I can get way more use out of this machine in its current location without me having to move it to the carpentry workshop. So setting up the hardware side of the Snapmaker 2.0 is a great amount of fun and actually an incredibly enjoyable process. When it comes to uh, diving into the software side of things you need to exercise a bit more patience because that's not something that you're going to get to hang off within like 15 minutes. So just set aside some time to learn the basics of uh, their slicing software of Luban. Luban allows you to uh, manually adjust everything in uh, what you want to do with the printer. So layer thickness, quality, infill, uh, all of that geeky stuff. There's a couple of tests as well that you can run with uh, Luban. I will show you a few in this video and in the next video we will go to printing some actual usable parts using My Mini Factory. My Mini Factory is a 3D file library. It is only high-end files like for example from Night Customs, from RC Nerds, those type of files that you can purchase there for a really reasonable amount of money. And if you have a 3D printer like I currently have, you can just sit at home in your RC workshop and you can print parts while you do other stuff. Like for example film a video, paint a body or whatever, unbox a car even. It uh, doesn't really matter. So seeing that uh, my mini factory has such uh, an amount of great files available that are all usable for our uh, hobby niche I think is uh, fantastic. Luban also has a quick link to my mini factory so you can just dive into those files, grab those if you don't feel like drawing anything yourself which is something that I might look into in uh, the future. A little footnote about Luban. If you run into any type of issue Snapmaker has a great online community both on Facebook and both on uh, forums that you can enter uh, with your questions so in case you do run into uh, some type of snag it is really easy to sort that out with uh, other people with other users that have perhaps run into the same issue now one of the most exciting things that i think i'm going to tell you is that you can win one of those machines uh, how really super low entry level just go check out the link in the video description box which goes to my mini factory enter a picture of your rc trail truck so preferably uh, really a trail truck not like a rock race or anything but whatever you have if you have anything on there that is 3d printed and you think it looks cool or you made it look cool perhaps you have an entire 3d printed body perhaps you just have inner fenders a snorkel an interior piece a roof tent you get the id you don't have to have designed this yourself you don't have to have purchased this at my mini factory would of course be cool if you have uh, it just needs to be 3d printed and you need to use it on your rc truck or car we want to see it enter that we will pick some people that uh, we're going to highlight in a couple of weekly episodes uh, in which we're going to sort of like browse through a contest it will be like a knockout system and then eventually in the grand finale you will be able to win a Snapmaker 2.0 so I think that's great so don't hesitate go check out the link in the video description box to see how you can enter uh, fill in the form as well just so we know completely what you are about what your truck is about what parts you used and how you did it and then maybe you will see your truck appear in one of my future videos. In the next video we will really get into printing some useful stuff for my RC trucks. And uh, I don't want to make this video too lengthy. I hope this gives you a good idea of what the Snapmaker 2.0 is about. And also why I chose to also go with this uh, enclosure. 
uh, I am really giddy to putting this machine to some weekly use. So I'm going to be printing a ton of stuff with it just because I have so many ideas and I have so many parts that I want to have and that I want to obtain. And right now, finally, I have it all at the tip of my finger, which is really cool. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button. If you have any questions or comments, please keep in mind, I am by no means an expert in 3D printing or in snap making. But uh, I'm getting started with it. I just want to show you that it is really not that intimidating or scary. And I hope that you will follow me on my journey. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comments box. If you have not subscribed yet, please do. really helps the channel. And uh, ring the bell so you get updates. Check out all of the links in the video description box. And I will hopefully see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye. Back on.